Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. The other day, I was mowing my grass, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw an eastern fence lizard perched on a rock. And I thought, now there's an episode to do. So, today's episode is going to be on the eastern fence lizard. It's just amazing. I just keep finding really great stuff, and just outside my door. So my episodes are always about what's happening right now at this time of the year that you might see if you go outside your door or to a local park or a meadow or a forest area and see if you can find the same things. And it creates a great teachable moment for both of us. So in today's episode on the Eastern Fence Lizard, First, I'll talk to you about how to identify the eastern fence lizard to make sure that's the one you have. And then I'll also break down the scientific name and tell you the origins of it and what it actually means and how it relates to the lizard. And I'll also talk about the different common names and how they got their common names. I have to compare the lizard to the salamander. A lot of people still confuse them. Uh, old timers around here will talk about uh, salamanders and call them spring lizards. Well, that further confuses it. So we'll make sure we know the difference between salamanders and lizards. And then there's so much unique stuff about the biology, how this organism lives and survives, how it escapes predators, how it captures its prey, what it eats, and some really interesting anatomical features that go along with eastern fence lizard, which I think you might be surprised about. So stay tuned and watch my episode on the Eastern Fence Lizard. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's a make this invasive. It's exotic. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's So eastern fence lizard, that's its common name. And eastern might be a misnomer because it has a really, really broad range. It's all along the east coast and to the south and way out west. So it is a very ubiquitous lizard, meaning that it lives all over the place. So eastern might not be a good name for it. Fence lizard is a good name for it because it often is seen perching on fences. It likes to bask in the sun, so it gets that name. It's also called the pine lizard because you often find it in pine forests because it likes a kind of a dry habitat. It's also called the swift lizard or sometimes a pine swift lizard because it's very fast. It's very agile and these lizards are considered to be arboreal, meaning they can live in trees and they're really good climbers. Its scientific name is Scalioporus undulatus. Scalioporus undulatus. What does that name mean? Scalio means leg, and porous means hole, and it refers to the femoral pores on the inside of the thighs of this lizard and sometimes a lot of other different lizards. And they're used particularly by the males to mark territory with a waxy pheromone that other lizards can pick up as scents and know that there's a lizard living in this territory or it may single a female to say that there's a male lizard that's looking for you. So I'm really not great pronouncing scientific names. Scaloporus, I may be saying it wrong, undulatus. The undulatus part refers to undulating, like undulating waves. And if you look at the back of this lizard, you'll see that this lizard has a wave-like pattern on it, particularly on the younger ones and on the females. The males tend to be just darker brown, gray on the top. So how do you identify this lizard? How do you recognize it compared to other lizards? Well, one of the things, it's got very spiny scales. The scales are actually keeled if you look at them up close. And it gives it a spiny appearance. And for us in this region, in the state of Virginia and the southern states that are around us, this lizard is the only one that has that spiny appearance. The other lizards have very smooth scales, a more shiny look to them. But this one, I always think it kind of looks like a dinosaur. And other people have said, hey, that looks like a bearded dragon. So very spiny scales is the thing to look for. The brown, gray color and the undulating marks on the females and the, the younger ones. 
The males also have a blue throat and they have blue on the sides of their belly. So sometimes they're called blue bellies. The males will often display that color when establishing their territories or when they're attracting females. They may do a head bobbing that features the blue and they may flatten their bodies out and show the sides of their belly so you can see that blue. Unfortunately for these lizards, that also attracts carnivorous birds or, or other predators because they're making movement and they're head bobbing and they're flashing this blue. And while it works for them to establish their territories and perhaps frighten off other males or make a statement to other males, it also attracts predators. So there's always trade-offs in nature. So lizards and salamanders are often mixed up or put in the same group. But if you look at them closely, you know, they're, they're really unmistakably different. Lizards have scales. They have scaly skin. They have eardrums like uh, other reptiles, while salamanders have very smooth, moist skin with a shiny appearance, and some are actually slimy, while lizards have a very dry skin. Lizards, like other reptiles, lay eggs in a dry, leathery shell, while amphibian eggs don't really have a shell. They're laid in jelly, and they're see-through. So that's another distinguishing feature between the two of them. Salamanders are amphibians, lizards are reptiles. So Eastern fence lizards are diurnal animals. That means they're active during the day and they hide at night. During the daytime, they like a variety of habitats and because they are spread across wide regions of the US. Locally, they like the edges of pine forests with some rock piles nearby. They prefer drier sites, they don't like a lot of moisture, darkness, and dampness. And they're very tied to light. And basking in the sun seems to be a very important part of the biology and health of this organism. And they require time spent basking in the sun to raise their body temperature and also to help regulate their hormones and circadian rhythms and generally their life cycle. Fence lizards are very territorial. They'll tend to go back to the same place almost every day. In fact, this fence lizard that I found is frequently at this pile of rocks, and I've seen him several times over the last two weeks after I did some filming of him close up and then released him back exactly where I found him. Fence lizards will eat almost anything. They eat a lot of different kinds of invertebrates. They'll eat millipedes, centipedes, spiders, insects of all kinds, they'll eat moths, they'll eat stink bugs, and it seems one of their favorite things to eat is beetles. Studies have shown that a lot of the things that they eat are, in fact, many different species of beetles. And while eastern fence lizards eat a lot of different things, a lot of different things eat them too, including domestic cats and dogs, carnivorous birds, carnivorous mammals, and a number of different species of snakes. So it's a tough life out there for a fence lizard. So fence lizards have evolved with a number of different ways to protect themselves from predation. Their first line of defense is their speed. That's why they're called the swift lizard. And also because they're arboreal and they, live, they can live in trees and they can climb. And if you look at your feet, you can see that they're great climbers. So the first line of defense is they'll try to escape from a predator and move really fast. If they're on a tree, they'll circle the trunk just like a squirrel will. So if you see an eastern fence lizard on one side of this tree and you try to approach it, it'll probably run to the other side. And if you circle around and run to the other side where he is, he'll circle back around just like a squirrel. So that's first line of defense. Their second line of defense, for example, if you try to grab them with your hand, is they might bite you. And biting is a good way that reptiles have learned to get humans to drop them, and probably other organisms as well. The another thing that they'll do is they'll feign death. And I had this guy in a little terrarium for a few hours so I could do some filming. And I went by an hour later, and I looked at him and kind of shook the container a little bit, and he looked like he was dead. And I thought, how did he die? And I picked him up in my hand. And after a few minutes in my hand, he kind of woke up and started walking around. And I thought, wow, you really fooled me. A lot of organisms don't like to eat dead things because dead things are often rotten and don't taste good and can make you sick. 
And you're probably aware of this last line of defense that lizards will do. And they'll break their tails off. They have a group of cells called a fracture plane in their tails, which allows them to at will break their tail off. Now, what's the purpose of that? Well, if a predator is attacking and you break your tail off and that tail will start to wiggle and shake on its own, it distracts the predator. And that flopping motion is very attractive to a predator's trained eye that's tied into movement. And oftentimes that'll give the opportunity for the rest of the lizard to escape. So while breaking off the tail can be a very effective means of escaping to live for another day, it's biologically very costly. The tail of lizards contains a lot of stored energy, often in the form of fats, and this stored energy may provide the lizard enough energy to survive periods of time where there's little food, and particularly through survival for the winter where, where it will rely on energy that is stored. So it's biologically, it comes with a high cost, and it could eventually affect the longevity of the lizard's life. Eastern fence lizards are egg layers. They'll lay eggs in late spring or early summer. The eggs will generally hatch out in August or even into September. I found this lizard on the second week of September, and he seems to be uh, probably a newborn. I was kind of surprised at how late these organisms hatch from their eggs. And then finally, I wanted to tell you about a really strange anatomical feature that this lizard has and some other lizards do, and it's called a parietal eye, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's a third eye, and this third eye is located right on the back of the head. If you look very, very carefully at this lizard, you can find a little gray scale right in the center in the back of his head that actually is a rudimentary lens with a rudimentary retina. Can't really see with it. It might be more sensitive to light and dark, but it seems to play a huge role in thermoregulation, maintaining its body temperature, in circadian rhythms, the rhythm of life that's tied to light and dark cycles. It even seems to be connected to production of hormones and also navigation. Scientists have done some experiments with these lizards where they covered up the parietal eye and they found out they had trouble navigating and finding certain features. So really, really strange thing to think about that lizards have this third eye. So I've captured many, many and seen many, many salamanders in this area of Virginia and the Appalachian Mountains and I'd rarely seen a lizard and this was the first fence lizard that I ever got to chance to touch or see or, or get up close to. So I really had a lot of fun learning about the Eastern Fence Lizard and doing some research on it and sharing this with you. And I hope you'll continue to look stuff up and do your own research and fact check me and see what, what more you can learn about the Eastern Fence Lizard. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. Uh, if you like what I do, I hope you'll subscribe and keep up with my episodes. And please, I love hearing from you. Please uh, send me a message. Let me know if you find an eastern fence lizard. You can also go to one of my social media sites, either through my website, www.natureatyourdoor.com, and you can hit, post photos of your eastern fence lizards that you find on my Facebook page. So hope to hear from you soon. Watch my next episode and we'll see where it takes us. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.